Howdy, I'm Lee Paxton, and this is Suzanne Paxton here, uh, and she'll be demonstrating this uh, harp guitar. This is a Timberline 12-string uh, harp guitar, so what it is basically, it's a guitar here, and then you have these harp bass notes up on top here, and we're, we're experimenting with it as far as our new directions in sound and acoustic um, electric music, but we're just playing it here acoustically. We can try demonstrating it uh, later plugged in. Uh, but the, this is a Takamine 375S from 1976. And that this harp guitar, uh, we tuned this string, the, the, that's an E here. Yeah, here, see this. I'll hit my E on this guitar. That's mahogany back and sides and front there. And, um, and then we went E and then we went F. And then we went G for the third string. I hit that. And then A. And then C. And then this string, the D. Yeah, that. So E, F, G, A, C, D. E, F, G, A, C, D. Okay, so. And then the guitar we just tuned to the standard E, A, D, G, B, E. And uh, like I have uh, this Takamini. And this is a Timberline harp guitar here. And we're going to try to play. This is an A minor, right? This is a song I wrote back in the 1990s uh, called Debbie Does Dallas. A. Oh, 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 yeah, we have an intro that we came up with. Okay. Preacher on TV. He wants 
too bad but we're just getting started here with this thing we just got it this week and um there's there's a lot of potential i see for what we're doing with our new direction in uh acoustical music acoustic electric uh and that these sound good not even plugged in but when we plug them in and there are two plugs on this uh has two plugs so if you plug it in here, it gets a better sound spread. There are two K and K passive pickups inside it. If you plug it in this one, it sounds really good with both. But if you plug it in, in this bottom one, it, it gets more of the guitar. So we usually just plug it into the one that's closest to the front or the, the face or the top of the guitar. Uh, and that's how we've been doing it so far. And, um, but we're looking forward to incorporating this into the acoustic and acoustic electric music that uh, we're making that is based on traditional American acoustic uh, music, but with our own songs uh, in this style going forward. And we're also at times plugging these in and uh, not just through our acoustic amps, but also uh, with preamps, we're experimenting with that now, and we're looking forward to trying out some effects, but we, we still want to uh, keep as much of the good acoustic uh, qualities that we can, even if we electrify when we plug in the music. We, we want to get a good tone. So, I mean, that's why I'm pairing um, this. This is a knockoff of a Martin D... 35, but this is a Takamini knockoff of a Martin D 35. So it has three different panels in the back and that one is rosewood, but these other two are a jungle uh, South American Jacaranda wood that have a brighter tone and is a spruce top with mahogany neck. And then this, this harp guitar is mahogany front, back and side. So this has a lower tone, um, and that's Asian mahogany, which has a brighter tone than African mahogany. Um, but this is probably South American wood, even if it's uh, HPL and uh, lacquered, really nice uh, spruce top. And this is a knockoff of a Martin made by Takamidi in Japan in 1976. And this is a Timberline harp guitar. Uh, Timberline harp guitars are out of Southern California. The wood is probably Indonesian Asian uh, mahogany, and uh, it's it's so far we're having fun experimenting with it. But it is tough because you have to play rhythm and bass. So she has to go from like when we're playing an A, 
And then, uh, so there were some other songs that, an, an easy one that, um, well, relatively easy and the different, so if you went from, uh, there's another song we have called Any Road that starts out in the A minor, so, so we'll go with A. Sometimes 
simple sass joy song But any road that you take Can lead you wrong Yeah, that was not too bad at all. Yeah, we're just... We've only had this um, harp guitar one week. So, I mean, we've only played a few songs on it so far. And um, were there any other keys that we were trying to... Oh, with the Wild Mountain Time, we wanted to show something in G. Oh, the summer. see that we, we just got recently this uh, GoPro camera and I can see the batteries getting low and <laughs> we're just at 19 minutes so I think that's a good first de demonstration uh, of this um, Timberline harp guitar that we just uh, got recently and we tuned those strings at the top there E F G A C D. And then we're, we're just sticking with the standard tuning on the guitar part below that, E, A, D, G, B, E. So um, I think uh, we're looking forward to new directions in the acoustic, electric, um, traditional, and new singer-songwriter songs of this acoustic, electric, acoustical, electrical direction that we hope to move further into but today we just demonstrated these fully acoustically and we have these uh, acoustic electric amps too so we'll get into that more, uh, as time goes on but i think that's a good start 
All right, cool. Genghis. There's Gucky. Howdy. Yes, I'm here to talk today about um, the guitars that we've been playing. And usually um, I play one of these Martin or Martin style type of dreadnoughts. And Suzanne plays one of these Gibsons or these uh, Gibson style. They're like dreadnoughts. Um, and uh, usually she plays more of the rhythm and the bass too when she's playing this harp guitar. And I play more of the lead and um, some of the rhythm too. But these, most of these are uh, rosewood back and sides with spruce tops um, or, or something like that with a more brighter tone. This is, this Gibson is, um, uh, that's Indian rosewood back and sides. And this is a Japanese uh, 1970s Conqueror, which is, it's one of, they call them the lawsuit guitars from the 70s, uh, which are basically uh, Japanese copies of, uh, this This would be the, the real Gibson here. And that's a 2022 uh, rosewood back and side spruce top, mahogany neck and rosewood, Indian uh, rosewood fretboard. And this Japanese 1970s uh, Conqueror, which I think was imported by the Bruno company um, in the 70s. Uh, this is a knockoff of that, and it's some type of... Uh, something like Rosewood back and sides. It's actually pretty neat. It's a pretty neat uh, copy of this Gibson here. Um, and... Uh, I think it's pretty good. And we went down to Tennessee and got this. Um, and we, we checked out when we were down there the McCormick harp guitar, which, you know, it wasn't bad, but it needs some work. And so instead we got this Timberline, that's mahogany, front, back, and sides, uh, the harp guitar. But so Suzanne plays, we often play the, uh, that Gibson. And then this one we got uh, recently and put a K&K &K pickup in it to perform uh, more live with this one. Uh, but this one has the LR bags. Uh, that's an active pickup. This is a passive pickup in this one. And so we'll, we'll test these out with when we pair it with. This is a real Martin HD28 with uh, East Indian Rosewood back and sides, Sitka spruce top. And then this is a 1970s Takamini. Um, and it's, it's an F375S and it's, um, basically it's a Japanese lawsuit era, probably, or this was built in 1976. And, um, so it, it's basically a replica or we're really a knockoff of a Martin D35. And what's interesting about it, it has these th three different panels here, and that's rosewood, probably some type of HPL, uh, whether it's whether it's real Brazilian or Indian, I don't know. But this jacaranda wood here on th these two side panels, and this the side too, I think, that's a South American Brazilian wood. So that might be Brazilian rosewood of, uh, and, and then the mahogany neck. But this this is basically. Uh, a knockoff, uh, a Japanese knockoff of a Martin D35. And uh, it's a really nice guitar. We had a passive K&K &K pickup put in there. And, uh, the, but the, yeah, this is the real, because um, that's a 1976, that Japanese guitar here. And this is an American uh, made uh, Martin HD. 28 with rosewood that's um east indian rosewood back and sides a very nice uh picking and grinning machine it has you know th this is a little more difficult to play because that bone saddle on the martins is set pretty high on that and uh i lowered it just a little bit but i wanted to get a good projection of being able to play and get that
it's it's a little tougher to play with than when the saddles are set a little more low but i still wanted it to be up to you know something challenging to keep me uh practicing to try and get better using these uh a slightly higher set um bone saddles on this uh Martin HD28 from 1999, whereas this one, this had a plastic saddle on it, but we got a bone saddle put in, but still cut low. So it, you, you, it's a little easier to... See, it has a brighter tone, doesn't it? But um, these are, of course, a lot more affordable than the real Martins because, I mean, you know, we got that for over 800 bucks. But uh, a Martin D35 is around, these days, it could be close to four grand for a real one. So, I mean, this is a real D28. This is the 35 knockoff that the Japanese uh, made in 1976. And this is a Chinese uh, 2022 uh, knockoff of a Martin D45, or fancier because of all the abalone and all that. And, it's, and it has a Fishman uh, active pickup in it. It's a beautiful, I don't, I, it's some type of rosewood like or jungle wood, but it's really bright. It, it really has a real bright tone. It's beautiful. <laughs> And it has it has that it has a nice white line down the side and then the gold uh just like a d45 type of uh spruce top uh, martin knockoff it really looks like the d45 um but that was only 500 dollars because nowadays a, a martin d45 goes for over ten thousand dollars so you can see why people sometimes uh play some of these other ones even though i mean i love this HD28, this is just an acoustic, it doesn't have a pickup in it, but we had an, uh, a passive K&K &K pickup put in this Takamini. Uh, that this was built in 76, and this one here has an active pickup in it. And often what I play uh, until more recently, because I, I want to switch more to this one now, but I played one of these two, uh, Martin uh, Dreadnoughts. These were made in the United States. Um, and these uh, have active pickups in them, so they can be plugged in. And these are HPL, or high pressurized uh, laminate, but they, they do have rosewood uh, back and sides. And um, a, a more natural although I varnished this top on this one here. I've had this for over 20 years. This was built in 2002. And well, I'll, I'll play a little on that. And I, I love this guitar. It, um, but it does have an active uh, pickup in it that is really a pain to get to the battery in there. So you can see there's like there's there's wires that I <laughs> have to tape down every time I replace the battery. That's why we've been trying to go with the more passive ba uh, battery less because the more pa uh, the passive pickup systems don't have batteries in them because it is kind of annoying. But you know. I, I change the strings uh, every six months, and I replace the battery then. And um, but that's the, and this one here. This is a 1999. This is a D1R. That that one there is a DR. And these you know rosewood HPL back and sides. This one is cool because it has an an active pickup there that you can access the, the battery. It's like those Fishman systems. You can access the battery right there. And that's kind of cool. 
I like that, and you plug it in there, and uh, that's why. Yeah, this one I like as well as this one here. These these I played and now I'm going to probably try to play more of the Takamini for a while, but these I like a lot. Um, but in the high department, as far as the treble sounds, to try to keep compete with the Gibson that Suzanne was playing, I felt like I had to get a, a brighter tone. And um, that's why the Takamini I think it's a little bit brighter in tone and uh, even that Chinese D45 knockoff is really bright in tone. But these are really good guitars and you know when you plug them in you can EQ them in different ways anyhow. Uh, but I, we, we like the acoustic as well as the electric properties of these instruments. So uh, today we're just playing them acoustically and what we wanted to do was to compare and contrast mainly the differences between uh, for example, this Martin HD28 and this Takamini uh, F375S, which is like the Martin uh, D35 knockoff, and compare uh, the American you know, style of the original with uh, the, uh, the lawsuit era Japanese guitar, in this case from 76, and then over here with the Gibson Hummingbird, uh, Rosewood 2022 compared with this uh, early 1970s Japanese Conqueror Hummingbird knockoff uh, lawsuit era guitar. And so we're going to, I'll, I'll play the, uh, the Martin style ones. We'll do the original uh, Martin and she'll play the Gibson. And then we'll compare that with, I'll play the Takamini and she'll play the Conqueror. Because, um, yeah, we, we often use these at home, but uh, now we've been playing these and we'll, we'll play out more, we intend to play out more with these uh, Japanese guitars, but also, you know, mix it up to keep things interesting and have a variety of sound that we're trying to get. Because uh, often she plays more of the rhythm uh, parts on the guitar which is more the middle and low sound on these two and now sometimes the harp guitar as well and then I play more of the trebly lead parts on these uh, the, the Rosewood and the Junglewood uh, Martin style dreadnoughts uh, so yeah we'll We'll see how that goes. We'll, we'll compare and contrast because I mean the difference is like these these nowadays are over three grand, uh, whereas these you can get for under a thousand. And same with uh, with th this one here is over three thousand for the for the real Gibson Hummingbird, and then this um, Japanese lawsuit era guitar which under a thousand. So we'll compare it and see how that goes together. Oh, well, there's Gecky in there. Okay, it's going. Okay. This is a Martin HD 28 with um, East Indian Rosewood back and size Sitka spruce top. And this is a Gibson Hummingbird with a Sitka spruce top and Indian Rosewood back and sides. And we'll do a little bit to compare these, the American made with the, uh, the Japanese uh, lawsuit era versions of these types of instruments. Okay.
okay, now we'll try the Japanese lawsuit era versions of these type of guitars. Okay, and now these are the Japanese lawsuit era 1970s uh, guitars that are like those previous ones, but are uh, different. Um, this is the Takamine 375S from 1976, and it's supposed to be like a Martin D35. And this is the Conqueror Hummingbird from the early 1970s, and it's like the Gibson Hummingbird. Um, so we'll see how these compare uh, with the uh, previous uh, Martin and Gibson, this is the Takamine and the Conqueror. not too bad. There, the, the tone seems a little brighter on these compared to the American made ones, right? The, it's higher, more trebly, but not as rich. How would you no, describe this it? One. This, how would you describe that one versus the Gibson? It's duller. It's got like a weird zingy metallic tone. It's not as rich. It... What about the, this one's a little brighter and it could be because there's this wood here is uh, that jacaranda, and this is uh, rosewood here. Um, but yeah, it's this one seems more bright. What do you think of this one in comparison to the Martin? But th these are still pretty good, and when you plug them in, because we had the, the passive pickups that were installed in these um, just uh, this week. So... And, and when we you plug them in through an amp or, and then or through a preamp and then an amp, um, it produces good s sound because you can adjust the tone more to probably make up for some of those deficits. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course the harp guitar that we just got um, that has the K and K passive pickups in it too, and I thought a pretty very rich tone on that. Um, so uh, we were just playing acoustically today to, to see how these instruments sound you know, just in their natural acoustic uh, way. And then we'll do some later about the, um, how we're putting them through the preamps and the uh, amplifiers. And if eventually we're talked about getting into adding different effects, but we're not quite into that yet. We're trying to mainly get just focus on the reproduction of the acoustic natural sound as best as we can electrically uh, to get that out in, in, in the air and see how that sounds because uh, that, that's where we're focusing our efforts now acoustic electrically uh, with these instruments. And uh, so we'll have more about that later.